Hey everyone, it's Tracy Martirani here from Holistic Wellness with Tracy. Welcome back. If this is the first time you're visiting my channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you never miss a video. I post a new video every week on things like healthy recipes, herbal remedies, yoga poses, meditation, and a little bit of Ayurveda sprinkled in there as well. Today, you can probably see by looking behind me that I have been baking some bread. And now, since I'm already in the baking mode, I've decided to make some cornbread as well because it's fall here, corn is in season. And also, I plan on making some chili later this week. And you know, what goes better with chili than cornbread? Nothing, that's what. When I say corn is in season, you're probably thinking ears of corn from the farmer's market, you know, fresh corn, right? It's that time of year. But according to Ayurveda, autumn is a very, I'm gonna say unstable time. And you can see that in the weather, right? One day it's sunny and beautiful, then it's 80 degrees, then it's, you know, rainy and windy. Like day to day, the weather changes. It's all over the place. So the energy is within us as well. And according to Ayurveda, opposites bring balance. So when the weather around us and the weather affecting us, the energy affecting us is chaotic and tumultuous, tumultuous, no, I can't say that word, is chaotic. <laughs> we'll just go with that. Um, we want foods that are grounding and corn is a very grounding grain. Therefore, having something like cornbread or um, grits or polenta, things like that are perfect for eating during this season. So let's get started baking this cornbread. The very first thing I'm going to do is melt some butter and get my oven preheating. I could substitute a different kind of oil for the butter or maybe do half and half. I could do half butter and maybe half avocado oil or coconut oil, but it seemed easier just to pop a whole stick in than to mix and match. But that is one thing I love about this recipe and really all the recipes is you can just change up the, the ingredients just a little bit and it makes a slightly different version of cornbread. As a matter of fact, as I was looking for the recipe I wanted to use, I found that I actually had four different recipes written down. I had two on recipe cards and a couple just on sticky notes, and they were all basically the same with just minor differences. When I look at the recipes, the dry ingredients, the cornmeal, the flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt, you know, the baking powder, soda, and the salt, you're not really going to change much there. But you do have options with the cornmeal and the flour. I prefer to use an organic cornmeal because then I know that the corn that is used is non-GMO and I know there's not any yucky stuff added to it. However, if that's not important to you or your budget is really tight, feel free to use just plain run-of-the-mill cornmeal. I prefer sort of a medium grind on the cornmeal. If you pick up cornmeal that's very, very fine, your cornbread will be a little cakier. If it's coarser, it'll be a little crumblier. <laughs> Is that a word? Crumblier? And regarding the flour, same thing. I just use, typically, I use all-purpose flour. Today, I actually used bread flour because that's what I had on hand. I have sometimes substituted about half of the flour, the regular all-purpose flour, for a whole wheat flour. You know, you can play around, use whatever flour you want. The one thing I have never done is use gluten-free all-purpose mixture. So I'm curious if anybody out there has tried it, I would like to know how it came out using the gluten-free flour.
then I just add in my baking powder, my baking soda, and my salt. I'm going to stir it around just to make sure the dry ingredients are all mixed and don't have a big clump of something in there. And then I'll start adding my wet ingredients. Some of the recipes have you put your dry ingredients in one bowl and then mix all of your wet ingredients in another. That just seems like a waste, so I'm just building it all in one bowl. So the next ingredient is the sugar, and here again is a place where you can play. This recipe called for a mixture of brown sugar and honey. You could also use white sugar, you could use natural cane sugar, you could do all honey, you could do honey and maple syrup, you know, you could try whatever you want. It'll come out delicious. You can even decrease the amount of sugar a little bit. This called for a third of a cup of the brown sugar and two tablespoons of honey, and it's delicious. But if I had cut that brown sugar down to even a quarter of a cup, it probably still would have been just as delicious. The amount of sugar that you use might depend on how you plan on serving this. If you're serving it and you want it really savory, maybe you're going to stir in something like cheddar cheese or jalapenos, maybe tone down on the sugar a little bit. If you're looking for this to be more of like a breakfast snacky food and you like the sweetness, then up it a little bit. Do whatever sounds good to you. And the milk. Another ingredient that you can pretty much do whatever you want, whether it's almond milk, oat milk, dairy milk. I Like you can see here, I used a little bit of half and half because that's what I had in hand along with some oat milk because we tend to not have dairy milk in our refrigerator too much. Not because I have any sort of issue with it. It's just we don't use it much and it ends up going to waste. So I took my oat milk that I had left over from making overnight oats added a little half and half to it just to add a little more creaminess and that's what I'm using. And then the recipe also calls for a room temperature egg and I didn't plan ahead enough so my egg was still refrigerator cold. So I just took a coffee cup, filled it up with some hot water from the tap, set the egg in there, let it sit for 5-10 minutes, warmed it up nicely. Just remember just hot water from the tap is all you need. Don't use boiling water because we don't want boiled eggs. And then I'm just stirring in all of this butter. It does seem like a lot of butter, but you're not going to eat this whole pan at once, so it's okay. And then I just stir it until it's well combined. And last but not least, the final choice you have to make is what you're going to bake it in. I chose to use this cake pan. It's just an eight inch round cake pan, but you could use an eight by eight square baking dish. You could use a cast iron skillet. You want it to be about eight inches in diameter, just so that you get the you know nice thickness. If you use a bigger pan, it will be thinner and need to bake a little bit shorter. If you use a smaller pan, obviously it'll be thicker and you might need to bake it a little bit longer. But in the cake pan, I just oil and flour it. So I used an avocado oil, and just rubbed it around with a paper towel and then I popped in some flour just rotating it around to cover all the sides. I'll just knock the extra flour off into the sink and pour my batter in. And then I'm just cooking it at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. It comes out perfect actually when it came out. I didn't even test it. I could just tell by looking at it, it looked beautiful. It was perfectly moist without being too wet. Uh, the edges were cooked through without being too dry. It was perfect. But I'm curious while this is baking, how do you like to serve cornbread? Is there a special dish in your house other than chili that you like to serve with cornbread? I tend to use it for chili or soup and sometimes eat it for breakfast. And due to the magic of YouTube, 20 minutes has passed, and here we are with this delicious looking 
cornbread. <laughs> if I could just get it off my hand. I was way too impatient and decided that I needed to try it right away. So I started cutting into it without even letting it cool five minutes. I mean, I pretty much took off the, the mitt, grabbed my knife and started cutting into it. And the first piece really wanted to crumble. It wasn't ready to come out of the pan. Um, but the second piece came out beautifully and looked like that. Delicious. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will give homemade cornbread a try. It is delicious and so much better than any mix you'll find in the grocery store. Thanks and have a great day.